When it comes to the Apostles' Creed, Next to the affirmation that Jesus descended into hell, I probably get the greatest number of questions regarding our belief in the Holy Catholic Church. Are we pledging allegiance to the Roman Catholic Church when we say this? Let's find out. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Thursday, July 6th, 2023. What we call the third article of the Apostles' Creed begins, I believe in the Holy Ghost and, and the Holy Catholic Church. For most of us, when we hear the word Catholic, we think of the Roman Catholic Church. And since we're not Roman Catholic, it can be a bit confusing. So first, let's clear up the confusion, then talk about what we're really saying. Clearing up the confusion is easy. The word Catholic, spelled with a small c, simply means universal. It comes from a Greek word, katolikos, meaning something like in general. In Greek, it contains two roots, kata, meaning about, and holu, meaning whole or complete. So its root meaning is something like concerning the whole or concerning everything. In fact, the word itself isn't even primarily a religious term, or at least it wasn't originally. Bottom line, it's a garden variety adjective that refers to the most general of whatever we're talking about, in this case, the church. All of which is to say, when we say the Apostles' Creed, we are not saying we believe in the Roman Catholic Church, which then begs the question, what are we saying? Different churches have different ideas about what the church even is. In some traditions, only members of that denomination or tradition are understood to belong to the church. In some extreme cases, only those who belong to the particular congregation are understood as belonging to the church. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that, based on a literal reading of Revelation 14, 1 through 4, only 144,000 people will actually be saved out of the billions who have been professing Christians for centuries. But we, like most traditional churches, believe that the Church of Jesus Christ includes all believers everywhere and through time who have professed their faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if we think their belief system is wrong or defective. If they believe in Jesus Christ and the Trinity, they're part of the Church. It includes Roman Catholics, but also Eastern Orthodox, Protestants, Anglicans, non-denominational Christians, and everyone in between. This means something really important. It means the church exists independently of organized churches. Or I should probably say it exists and includes all organized churches. And this in turn means that whatever differences we may have with, with other churches, and I would never minimize those differences, we would never fully condemn them or count them as outside the church. We stay in relationship with them. It means we must always be ecumenical in our approach. So whatever we may think of organizations like the National Council of Churches, the World Council of Churches, the World Alliance of Reformed Churches, or any other ecumenical organization, and whether we agree or disagree with their statements, we are bound to belong because organizations like this are composed of members of the Church Catholic, the Universal Church. When we isolate ourselves from those with whom we disagree, we do nothing but cut ourselves off from sisters and brothers in Christ. One other thing it means is that we always hold out the possibility that other churches may be right and we may be wrong. For none of us has a complete lock on the truth. To believe that we and we alone have a lock on the truth is simply a form of idolatry. It's one thing to hold firm to our convictions. It is quite another con to condemn others for theirs. I often get a smile when I think about what heaven might look like when we all get there. I imagine that many of us will be very surprised to see who's there. And I imagine many people will be surprised to see the likes of you and me there also. One last thing it means, the church is holy, that is, set apart, not because it is composed of superior people, but because God has called it into existence. God, Paul had a derisive term for those who believed themselves superior to others, 
super Christians. We are not a church composed of super Christians, but of ordinary sinners who have been called into the fellowship of the church by God. Last thing, the church owes its existence to the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Catholic Church appears here in the Creed, I believe in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Catholic Church. When we say this, we are acknowledging that we belong to a company of believers that has been called into being by God, sustained by the Holy Spirit, and which exists across denominational lines and even through time. It's a pretty awesome thought once you get right down to it. It's enormously encouraging to me. Let me leave you with these words from the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Tomorrow, what do we mean by the communion of saints? But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.